first of all, let's welcome creative genius Nolan Bushnell. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, welcome to People Are Talking. It's nice to have you with us, Nolan. When you invented your first video game, did you have any idea that it would take off? I mean, do with it, what it's done today. Yes, I did, but I, but I didn't think it'd do it quite as quickly. It's on a home video system made by Atari. Video games were an instant hit. With Atari's release of Pong in 1972, a huge phenomenon was suddenly born. In the following years, Atari became the visible face and dominant force of a billion dollar worth industry, which everyone wanted to be a part of. Arcades became the center of entertainment for millions of people, a place where friends would meet and gather around the machines to play the latest and greatest video games. Thousands of companies were created with the sole purpose of cashing in on a new trend that promised to quickly make anyone that was a part of it incredibly rich. Every company wanted to make their own games, their own arcades, and their own home console, in a market where interest in video games increased exponentially and seemed unstoppable. Most popular pastimes in the country right now, but will this popularity last is the question. While well, the makers of video games are gambling that it will. Electronics is changing so rapidly. And with each change in electronics, it brings something new. So this is not a passing fad. But of course, just like what happened to Icarus, everything that flies too high too quickly must fall down and burn just as fast. For video games, the moment they finally flew too close to the sun was 1983. E.T. for the Atari 2600 is the perfect example of the bad practices that crashed the video game industry. The market was completely saturated with dozens of different home consoles that only played a handful of games and were extremely overpriced. Programmers were working overtime, poorly paid jobs in order to quickly publish as many games as possible, which flooded the market with nearly unplayable, low quality games. Arcade machine sales also plummeted, with thousands of small businesses returning the ones they had bought after not getting a return in their investment. There were just too many machines out there and not enough people to play them. The final nail in the coffin was placed by the same company that had once started it all. Made in just a couple months to quickly capitalize on the hype produced by the latest Steven Spielberg film, E.T. for the Atari 2600 was rushed into the market. The game is, to this day, still considered one of the worst video games ever created. Obtuse, annoying, and nearly unplayable, E.T. sold an unprecedentedly low number of copies and was the tipping point for customers to completely stop trusting the video game industry. In a now infamous decision, Atari buried their unsold copies of E.T. in a desert in New Mexico. The place that had once witnessed the birth of the atomic bomb was now the graveyard for the video game. For a couple of years, video games were dead, and the companies that made them had vanished. Video games were a fad, and their time was over. That is, of course, until a company by the name of Nintendo came into play. Originally a playing card manufacturer, Nintendo had gotten into the video game industry in the height of its success. Having produced great arcade games such as Donkey Kong, they decided to launch their own console, the Famicom, for Japan, where the industry crisis hadn't been as catastrophic. The Famicom launched in Japan and other Asian countries in 1983 and was met with great success. Nintendo had learned from their Western counterparts and decided to review every game that would get published for their console in order to ensure their quality and avoid flooding the market. When it came time to sell the Famicom in the West, Nintendo had to design a new marketing strategy to avoid being associated with the video game companies that customers had been burned by. 
Their decision was to rename the console to a Nintendo Entertainment System and market it as a toy instead of as a video game console. The NES would sell in the toy aisle instead of the electronics department, and commercials were specifically targeted at kids who weren't as skeptical of video games as adults were. The strategy was a success and was able to breathe new life into the video game industry. The companies that followed in Nintendo's steps also leaned into this marketing strategy and were able to find success in a similar way, with Sega becoming Nintendo's biggest competitor. And while this strategy saved video games from disappearing, it also created a stigma. Due to the general public having grown skeptical of video games in the decade prior, and the new target audience being younger, video games started to be viewed as a childish thing and generally as a waste of time. But rather than fighting the stigma, the video game industry ran with it, since appealing to their niche audience had brought along great revenue. Remember kids, try this at home. As older audiences were being more and more alienated by the industry, what once was a fun pastime enjoyed by people of all ages was becoming a thing that could be publicly ridiculed or demonized without any backlash. The debate continues about what to do to prevent mass shootings like the tragedy in Connecticut or the Aurora Theater shooting. Many are taking a look at video games. Norwegian media is reporting that police found a number of violent video games at the attacker's home. Home of people raise concern over violent video games and the Too vicious. Violent video games. CBS News that Adam Lanza was motivated by violent video games. Video games became a scapegoat to be blamed for every bad thing that affected the youth, even the most atrocious acts, without any evidence to support their claims. Told the president today that numerous scientific studies show there's no connection between video games and violence. The main conversation became whether or not video games were harmful for people due to the extreme lack of understanding of the medium the general public had and because of how weird the industry could seem at times. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. My name is Reggie. I'm about kicking ass. I'm about taking names. And we're about making games. All right. Bring the house down, guys. Luckily, in recent years the stigma has started to wear off, thanks to a maturing industry and the fact that the kids that video games were once made for have now grown up. While remnants of past conversations still remain. The gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. And the weirdness of the industry isn't completely gone. Okay, can you swear here? Can you swear? Okay. okay. Fuck the Oscars, you know? Fuck the Oscars! Fuck you! I'll tell you! Despite this, video games are finally gaining more acceptance from the mainstream audience. Wow, so unexpected! Thank you, everybody! It's a great night for all of us! This current landscape has allowed for different kinds of conversations to be had about video games, with the most important of them being whether video games are, or can be, a form of art. While this conversation has been had many times by now, with arguments on both sides, we seemingly can get to an agreement, with personal biases determining each individual perspective. Ultimately, video games are going to become a new art form. I don't, I don't think they're there yet. They're fun. Um, they're not art, but they could be art. And they create works of visual art yes, they that do. are Im immersive in ways that art has never been before, and it's actually unique. It's actually a unique form. But this debate is not the case with any other forms of art, such as painting or sculpture, which everyone can agree that are an art form. And that may indeed be because painting and sculpture are very old and have been considered art for millennia. But take cinema, for example. It is a relatively new medium, only about a generation older than video games, yet it is also generally considered to be a form of art. Cinema gets, in many ways, the recognition that video games often demand for themselves. But are they at the same level? And action! We can only answer that question by discovering how cinema got to the place it is at today, and what video games can maybe do to follow in its steps. 
Cinema is a very special form of art, since it is the only one that is not thousands of years old, in contrast with others like painting, architecture, sculpture, literature, music or performance, also known as the classic arts. These classic arts have developed throughout human history thanks to two main driving forces, artistic genius and technological development. New technologies allowed artists to think bigger and be more ambitious, being able to build more complex statues, taller buildings, or easily spread their work. And it was through this very relationship between art and technology that cinema was born, thanks to the invention of the cinematograph in 1895. While originally viewed as not much more than a magic show worthy trick, artists took advantage of the new machine and started to create art with it. As technology got better, films became more ambitious and slowly but steadily started to be recognized as the works of art they were, giving birth to a new art form, cinema. City's breaking down on a camel's back City's breaking down on a camel's back City's breaking down on a camel's back City's breaking down, city's breaking down But the cinematograph wasn't the most revolutionary invention that affected the world of art. That came a few decades later with the creation of the computer. Originally designed by Alan Turing to decode Nazi messages during World War II, it was later developed for both scientific and artistic purposes. Computers can nowadays help artists in many ways. From new ways to compose, produce and mix music, to new ways to design sculptures or architectural projects, or even as a medium for writing and painting, computers have become the ultimate tool to help artists create. They have allowed for every existing form of art to further develop and also help artists in sharing their work with the rest of the world. For that reason, it was only logical that computers, maybe the ultimate point of conjunction between art and technology, would create their own form of art. That technology alone is not enough. That it's technology married with liberal arts, married with the humanities, that yields us the result that makes our hearts sing. And that finally happened in 1972 with the creation of the video game. While at first it was difficult to recognize the artistic values of video games, since they are very unlike anything that came before them, as time went on and technology developed, this relationship between video games and art became more clear. In video games, the line between the art and the audience gets blurred with the player becoming both lead actor and spectator of the game. In a video game, the player gets thrown into a world that can be affected by their decisions, yet can also exist without them. This allows for every person to have a different experience playing the same video game, since it is inherently incomplete until a player takes control. Video games have learned from the art forms that came before them, especially from cinema. And these lessons, along with their close relationship to technology, have allowed them to develop at a very fast rate. Video games can't exist without the technology behind them, but this has allowed artists to create unique experiences that can engage and connect people like no other medium can. Video games are the artistic medium of this generation, and as technology keeps developing, video games will keep having a bright and exciting future. Although their troubled past hasn't allowed them to have the respect and recognition they deserve, video games didn't need to prove anything to become art. Because of their nature, video games are, and have always been, a form of art. <laughs>